Well, this is the next day now, so this will be another video. Yes, I've been working. This is the table I was going to use. I made this for my film splicing and everything to bring it in and do that, but we don't have room in the house for it. And uh, although it would have made a good workbench, it's 24 by 31. Those two pieces of plywood that I showed you on other videos, they're 24 by 48. Yes, I got the air conditioner in too. I just stuck stuff up there so I can get to work. That's a, a 24 by 48. That's another one, 24 by 48. And then the one behind it, you can't see, is a half inch plywood. So I'm gonna make a bench top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the bench top and notch out for each one of these two by fours so that the bench top will come right up to here and, and stuff won't fall down and get lost in the, you know how things happen in the workbench when you drop something it disappears for life? Well, not on this one. So I'm gonna notch it out so that the bench comes right up to here, right up to the outside wall. Now, naturally, if I wanted to sheetrock this and insulate it, but I'm not going to go to that extreme. This air conditioner does pretty well. I set it up on, uh, I think, number seven. It goes up to nine, so that they're just numbering on the old system. Works very well. What I had to do here is to take this off, drill three holes, bring it back to three quarters of an inch, from this plastic front and I got a little slope on it you can see the angle here probably a hair more than it should but that's okay and I'll show you the outside of it okay you see how the tilt is on that this grill is all the way exposed to the outside and the biggest space I had and purposely left it is a half, about almost a half inch about three-eighths of an inch and I took some of this round um, material. It's, I don't know what they call it. It's made out of uh, styrofoam, about a half inch in diameter, and I put it in there. This I just caulked, and I caulked on the top. The top is uh, very, very little spacing, so I didn't need any filler in there. I only needed the filler on the bottom and on the inside. So. That's got a tilt to it now, and it works very well. We're getting there. So now I got I got to measure and cut. The bench will end right there, just to the left of that uh, Lasco 20-inch box fan box. There's a fan in there, by the way, and. I've been checking the table, our, t our kitchen table is 29 and a half inches from the floor to the tabletop. So I think 30 inch height would be good. This is the chair I'll be using. I actually only need one leg and I'll probably do like I did at the screen house. Have an angle piece coming out from the top left corner facing you down on an angle to the footing of the sill uh, below the double two by four. Over here it won't need it because I'll have pieces filled in. The question is do I have enough two by four to do this? What I was going to do originally is to just take and put that table, that brown table, put it in here and lay one of these pieces of plywood across. That is fine, but any, you know what's going to happen, stuff's going to roll down behind and it's going to get lost, especially when I start working in here. All right, enough talking. I just want to give you an update on this. So let me get going here. Okay, like all my projects, there's a little change in plans. 
These two three quarter inch pieces here, although they're in pretty good shape, there's knots on this side, but uh, there's knots on this side too, but this this uh, smooth, you know. Here they're not. But I decided that I'm gonna use this 22 inch wide, so I'm shy two inches by 48 inches, because this has got a much better finish to it. This side here is the rough side, although it's the not so smooth, they're not recessed. But um, this is going to be the workbench. It's half inch plywood, but that's okay. Now what I did is I put cleats on two sides. I had put in two two by fours on the horizontal here and screwed everything screwed in. That Dewalt uh, drill dry, uh, screwdriver works really well. And uh, this here is some wood that came from the um, tub surround, the, the, the shower tub that we got. This was part of the shipping. I save everything. It's a nice piece of wood. It makes a good cleat. Now here's what I'm going to do. This is half inch plywood. All right, I got this down a half inch so that the bench top, which is half inch, will come flush to this two by four here. That's the same all the way around. See, that's what the mark is up here. I'm down one half inch. So that's where the cleat goes. And now the plywood will go on top of this. So this way, nothing can fall behind it. Now what I got to do now is to bring the plywood in and mark out for these 2x4s so that this plywood will shove right up against the wall. And this will act as a support so I don't really need to put a cleat on the outside wall. You know, this just, nothing's going to fall off the bench from the sides. It can only fall off down there or off towards the uh, front where I'm sitting. So this gives me a 22 inch bench instead of a 24 wide, but that's all right, 22 is right here. There's the mark right there. So that's my 22 inch. And so that's plenty. That's plenty, that's, that's you know, what I need. But half inch plywood is gonna be sufficient for this bench. That's what I had on my workbench, but I had two by fours underneath to reinforce it. I can always add those and screw those in later. I don't have them now, I'd have to go and get them. So what I'm gonna do now is to bring this piece of half inch plywood in so I can start marking out for these two by fours over here and here. This one will probably just be a little corner to cut out and then I can trim this off afterwards with the saw, that's not a problem. So, rather than to try to notch it all out over to here, which is what I was going to do, I could have, but that would make a little more cutting, and then if I didn't do it just right to get it tucked in here right, I would screw it up, because uh, I've already screwed up one piece. Putting this piece in here, it's a little under 12 inches. It's a blade thickness less than 12 inches from here to here. What I done, a stupid old goat, I measured from here to here and cut it. So I wasted a piece of two by four. So I'm gonna bring this piece in and lay it in place and get my square and start marking out the cutoffs of the two by fours, which would be like one here, one here, here, and here. So I don't have to worry about cutting off on the right side because it's gonna butt up against the two by four horizontal pieces that I showed you. All right, here's what we got. In order to keep this thing from falling down, here I got an old constant voltage transformer that I used to use when we went camping. The campgrounds were low voltage, so an old constant voltage. That thing has been here. I never left it in my workshop. That's an oldie I got at a surplus one time. But anyways, um, you can see it's butted right up against here, and it's the right height. So in other words, this becomes part of the workbench too. So what I gotta do now is here, I gotta notch out here, 
And I got a notch out here. Notch this, notch this, and just notch this corner here. And then I can shove this right up against the wall. And that'll bring me to the 22 inch mark, counting from here back. That should be enough. As I said, it's on a small scale. So, yes, it's two inches narrower, but not a big deal. It's a better finish on this. Now on the corner, I'll probably round off the corner a little bit here. We'll do that when we take it out to cut it, so we'll probably put a little mark on there. We'll mark this off camera. We'll cut it off camera. And Tommy's not here. He may be back later. And uh, we'll cut it off camera and uh, we'll insert it. All right, she's flushed up here. And she got a little space in here. Well, the building isn't perfectly square. It's square as I could get it, but she's right up against there. Notched out. Notched out here. Nothing's going to fall down in there. And um, I could probably put some finish nails in here to go down to to support it. I rounded the corner off so we're going to have a, a beam coming down over there. Probably not to the floor. Maybe, maybe I'll go halfway. I'll see. But I want to have a, a piece going across here and I don't think I have that. I have all short pieces, I don't think so, but I can I can add as I go along. But this is a good area, and, and originally I was only going to have a 31 inch bench, which would be about out to here. But now I've got a bench that goes all the way from the wall, all the way to here. So I have got a four foot work area, where originally I was going to have a 30 or a 36 inch wide work area. So I got some work to do on this yet. So I'm going to do that off camera. We'll get back to you in a minute. All right, I got the uh, top on the outside. I found a two by three that I'm gonna put on the front edge instead of a two by four, cause I don't have one long enough. It's gotta be 47 inches, allow for the end piece. And then I've got some two by two if I don't have enough 2x4 to support the middle of it, I'll use a 2x2 two two in there and on the end the same way. But if I have enough 2x4, maybe I might have enough 2x4 to do the end and this. But the front part is going to be a 2x3 and that will give me a more leg room. I, I have skinny legs, so I don't have to worry about that. The chair is 14. 14 inches from the floor to the seat and the top of this bench is now 29 and a half instead of 30 and then you allow for the thickness of the 2 by 3 which will bring you down to probably about there um, not a problem I can slide up underneath there it's the same height as my computer desk I'll take you outside and I'll show you what I've been doing what I got here is a two by three clamped in. This allows the half inch. This is upside down now, you're looking at the bottom of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nail this in place. Before I do, I'm gonna mark it. And then I'm going to glue it and nail it. I've been doing um, a lot of screwing today, <laughs> um, but I'm going to nail it, and the reason the why I say that is because when you drive the screws in, they're going to go a little below the surface of the plywood, and you're going to have these little splinters sticking up, and that wouldn't be very pleasant working with. So 
a nail will give a better finish on the, on the bench. The parts where I'm not going to be working, I can screw them. So let me get going here. I'm going to use inch and a quarter common galvanized because simply because that's what I have. That'll be sufficient for the uh, half inch plywood to go into this together with the glue. So let me get going on that and I'll join you in a minute. All right. This is what I did. This is the bottom, of course. Now I don't have any more 2x3, so I can't put an end cap for 2x3 in here. I will look, but I don't think I have any more. Now what we got to do is put a centerpiece support in the middle here of either a 2x3 or a, um, if I have to use a 2x4, it'll be up underneath anyways. All right, I'm using two by twos here, actually one and a half by one and a half. Two by three is the front face of the bench. This is recessed back about uh, two and three quarter inches. It glued and we're gonna use the small nails like we did here. And this is the center support. And this is the back wall, so it's I got to just figure how I'm going to clamp this down when I nail from the other side. And this side here has already got the cleat on the right hand side as you saw earlier in the video. Alright, I got a angle on here. This is going to be the piece that's going to go up underneath. See it goes this way. It says support the left end of the bench. So before we can do that, we got to pre-drill this or we'll crack this for sure. So I can screw this piece into the end and I'll show you right now. To go like this and then I raise it up and screw this in there. Put a screw in here or a nail and down at the bottom there, that's all. And then I'll commence to put the rest on. But before we can mount this, we got to make sure we're 30 We're 29 and a half inches. We just got to raise this up. I've already measured this. So the only thing I got to do now is to just drill the holes in each end so I can nail this or screw it in place. All right, we're gonna put this end in first and then we'll adjust it at the other end. I got it pretty close. Got so much junk in the way here and I took out a lot of stuff. Took out a lot of stuff out of here. Most all of it's in the other shed. It's looking good now. Yeah, but the problem is I don't have enough light in here. I need a lot of light with my rotten eyesight. That should hold it up. Yeah, but I'm gonna fasten it down at that end. But before I do, I want to see what the height. 29 and a half. I got a black mark on this so I can see it. Alright, it's got to come up. At least it's easier to keep it up there now. Now I just got to pre drill down below and put a screw in that. We're using screws because I can get the bench out of here if I need to, but I don't think I'd have to get it out of here. This is a good size bench. What size is it? It's uh, 22 inches by 48. Oh. So it's a good size one. A lot better than, a lot bigger than I thought I was going to have. I think my drill needs to be charged. I'll tell you, the Harbor Freight drills hold it up really good. The last time you saw me do a project, that's the same charge. All right, now. We got to do is we got to get the screw. We get the screw. Let's see. This is a good screw. You need a good screw, and we're going to find a good screw. Uh, we don't want to screw too long. Uh, I think we could probably use the shorter one. 
Uh, you know what? We used a longer one. Now what I gotta do is temporarily put a block in back of this to hold the bench up so it doesn't slide down. We need our 29 and a half inches to the tabletop. It's exactly, exactly 29 and one half inches. So to level, we're going to put the screw in. If I can find it, here it is. Got your ass in the way here. Well, those things happen. We use this block in there to keep it from sliding down, and then we can take the block out afterwards. Perfect. Take the block out. Take the little block out. Good and solid, huh? Oh, yes. Now what I got to do is we got to nail. And we're only nailing into three-quarter stock. So we had a little difficulties with this number three nails in here, bending them over a few times because I didn't pre-drill. We're going to put a very fine bit, maybe a sixteenth-inch bit on the on the drill, and we're going to pre-drill and we're going to put some finish nails in there or number threes. We just need enough so that the, the bench don't wobble on us. And uh, so what we've got here is uh, 48 inches. Actually more than that if you count this three and a half inch two by four on the, on the horizontal over here. But that's really not a workspace that just keeps stuff from falling off. So we got all kinds of room here. We'll probably have a um, couple outlets in here. We got to run a circuit over a 20, a, a 12 gauge uh, over here. And we can plug in the air conditioner because the air conditioner is right now is running on the 14 light lighting. We're going to have a uh, 12 wire coming in. All right, what I got now is a 16th inch bit, a lightweight hammer, number three galvanized, the inch and a quarter nails, and we're just going to be nailing into this three quarter stock, this piece of uh, cleat here. So. These nails, are, nothing's going to be glued, so if I need to get it out, all I could do is hit it with a hammer and come right up, because these nails are, are small. These nails are small, and that's purposely done that way. Now, if this was a um, workbench where I was going to have heavy stuff and a vice and everything, I would be using um, two three quarter inch or planking and big nails and screws. But this is just a lightweight electronic stuff, so we don't need that. I really need a light in this corner. I'm telling you, there will be lighting in here. I might put a light overhead, I might use this. Fluorescents generate a lot of noise and they're no good in the winter time. When it's too cold they won't come on. The light is good on this drill except one thing. It's shaded because of the chuck shades the bit so you can't see the bit. You can see below the bit. With my bad eyesight, I need lots of light. Can't even find a hole anymore. Yes, I can't find a hole. I told you it's getting dry. I hope I didn't get a hole again. Can't find a hole anymore. There it is. All right, we don't need the TV transformer anymore. Now. 
over here, we got to find out where the cleat is. And that's not too hard to do. All we do is get our pencil, which I lost. I use a marking pen then. And we draw a line here. And uh, we do the same down here. So what you do is you just come forward the line. How about mm, estimation trick, eighths of an inch. Everything I do is an estimation. Try to get as close as I can. I'll just make sure I got the Don't miss it. It's easy to use a lightweight hammer on these small, uh, small nails. The big ones are 16 pounds. Yeah, 16 pounds. 16 ounce. Hey. Could be a 20 ounce too, I'm not sure. Okay. Alright. What I'm doing is just on this side of the line, I'm, I'm nailing all this down. You know, I'll continue on. The battery's running out on this camera. So that's all we're going to do today. So that's the end of this section of the video, and we'll see you on, well, this is probably part two, so it'll probably be part three. It all depends on how many minutes can I can fit into each part. That's it. Thanks for watching. Did you know that the average bed contains 6 billion dust mites? Hmm.